Alison, how lovely to see you today. And I know you live in California, but you are in Idaho at the moment. I believe you're visiting family, is that correct? You got it. I My son is in the US Air Force and um, I'm visiting his family. That's like great. That's wonderful. And I hope that you're having a really lovely time. So thank you for spending time with me today with this conversation. Now, Alison, have you ever got bored in Sunday school? Now, I know you have. <laughs> you do know I have. And because yeah. uh, I was a bit naughty and um, Sunday school on that particular day was very boring. And um, so being probably the cheekiest kid in the class, I began to distract the teacher or my efforts to distract the teacher and uh, get her off subject. But the thing is, the Holy Spirit was all over it. And my efforts to distract the teacher and get her off subject ended up turning into mass conviction for the whole group. Right. And towards the end of the class, every single one of us in the class wanted to get saved. Wow, that's just was, amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. And so um, she was a wise teacher. She said, we, we couldn't get saved in the class. We had to do it on our own time. And she took us all into a back room, which was very intimidating. And then she said, I had to start first since I was the troublemaker that got us on that track anyway. And um, I was about seven, six or seven, right in there. And um, she said, I, I had to go first. I was really scared. And um, I said, oh, I'm scared. But somehow the words came and I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sin, um, to cleanse my heart and to come and live in my life. And um, funny story about that. One of the grandsons that I'm visiting, he's two. He said, uh, Jesus is in my tummy. And I said, oh, is he in your heart too? He said, no, he's in my tummy and he's eating all my food. <laughs> oh, that's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> what well, did your mum say when you said to her that you got saved? Well, she said, don't worry, dear. I did it too and you'll get over it. Mm -hmm. And that was 50 odd years ago. But um, I, I'm grateful to say I didn't get over it. But there was an incident that happened if you're um, if you're interested, do tell us. Don't worry about the phone. <laughs> Hello, Kevin calling. I'm hoping someone will answer it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, tell us about this incident, Alison. So when I told my mum that I'd given my heart to Jesus, and she said, "Don't worry, you'll get over it." I said, "No, mum, I won't. I I gave my life to Jesus, and it really meant something to me, even though." I was about seven years old. I didn't really have a, the, the whole knowledge that goes along with this kind of lifetime commitment. And, uh, but by the end of a week, my behavior had changed to the degree that my mom wanted to give me 50p because I'd been such a good girl. And I said, no, mom, it's because Jesus is in my heart. But something within her couldn't let that be enough. Right. She wanted to buy it because it hadn't worked for her. So she didn't really want it to work for me, I'm guessing. And she wanted to bring me back to a level of just a little girl who happened to be good for a week. But I don't think being good for a week was even in my capacity at that age. <laughs> so even at that age, Jesus had done a deep work. Yeah. Now the leader said, had you read your Bible and prayed? Is that right? That's right. We went back. I went back to church the next week because I knew that was part of the deal. But um, we were in a group again around a table and um, the leader began. He did. He asked every single person, did you read your Bible and pray every day? And I am standing at this time. I'm at the end of the line. In the beginning, I was at the front. I'm at the end thinking, oh, no, I didn't even know this was part of the deal. I didn't know about this. And so my six or seven year old self is wrestling with, what do I say? And everyone said, yes, 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 yes. And it came to me. 
And I knew that I did not do that because I didn't know that I was supposed to. <laughs> and, um, and I said yes too. But what happened is some form of, like I would say, I got overtaken by a form of deception because I had lied and I knew it. And the guilt was such a heavy burden for me to bear that it took until I was 16 and really gave my life over to God once and for all um, for that to lift off of me. Wow, that's incredible. It really is. So fast forward a bit now, Alison, what happened then? So I'm 16 and I've just finished all my exams as you do in the UK. And um, a crusade comes to a town, just a couple of towns over from my home. And how I even, I think I knew about it because my one of my teachers was involved in it and he invited everybody. Don't ask me how. Um, up until this point in the years between six and 16, I had gone through cycles of knowing my need for God, deeply wanting to be right with God, but not quite knowing how for this to happen. And remember, I had been, I, I really didn't have a full teaching package. I didn't know some of the habits we can cultivate to be close to God. Like there's a Bible verse that says, who is he who will devote himself to being close to me? Well, I want to say I'm one of those. I will devote myself to being close to you. But between six and 16, I didn't have a clue how. No. So, I so I, I was wobbling along and I would sin terribly. Who knows what it was? Because between six and 16, there's a big range of sins. And I would repent and I'd feel better. But feeling better wasn't enough. And then I'd get going again until I sinned and felt terrible, which was going right back to the beginning when I lied and felt terrible and fell away and found my way back and sinned and fell away. And so it was a real season of trying to come near, but falling very short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, Alison, you did, though, have a hunger for God's word. Am I right in saying that? Even though you said you felt you kept sinning and mm -hmm. needed help with that, you did have a hunger for God's word. So when the hunger for God's word came, it was, uh, I would say that I really turned my whole life, my past, my present and my future over to Jesus on June the 12th, 1978. And that was on a mud floor in Good News Crusade. I'll ever be grateful for, for the folk. And you were one of them who, um, who were willing to do the patient work that it took to walk with me. Um, and so June 12th, 1978, I, I turned my life over to God. And um, at that moment, that's when a deep hunger for the word of God hit me. I didn't ask for it. It came as a bonus. Yeah, that's In the amazing. beginning, I was asked, did you read your Bible and pray every day? And I'm like, no, I didn't even know I was supposed to. Now at 16, I can't do anything but read my Bible and pray every day. It's happening, but it's an internal work. It's a deep work of the spirit. And I would just say anyone that's suffering with anything in life, just ask God for the hunger we need for today, because yesterday's hunger won't feed us today. We need a new hunger for a new day, a new hunger for new circumstances, because life can be tough. And there's many things that can come up. And, um, you know, I just would encourage us that we'll, we'll get what we need for today. Yeah, how true that is, Alison. And during that time, I mean, you love God's word because you have a preferred way, do you, when you read God's word? Yes, I do. Um, I have a little grandson here. His name oh. is Levi. Hello, Levi. <laughs> Cutie. <laughs> Uh, it's come to say hello to everyone. <laughs> wants to have a quick look. Um, oh, and that's lovely. So you have this preferred way of reading God's 
word because you love words, don't you? You really love words. I do love words and I probably am a, somewhat of a wordsmith. And there's something um, in this in um, in church history, there's something all the Bible scholars might want to look it up called Lectio Divina. And um, I always thought I was a little bit odd. Um, but when my kids were little and I had five kids um, between zero, my oldest turned seven when my youngest was born. And um, when in those years, I was very busy mummying. Yes, and, yes. Um, it was a lot. Yeah, I can imagine that because I know that um, Susanna Wesley, John Wesley's wife, Susanna, she found it very difficult and struggled to find time with God because she was a very busy mum. And what she would do is pull her apron over her head like this mm -hmm. so that she could pray to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> which was amazing you know so yeah it is finding that time for you which we're going to talk about in part two but just going back slightly did you find that you had good friends around you when you needed help and delving into God's word did you find that friendships were important to you I think the most important friendship when it comes to delving into the Word of God is that friendship with Jesus. Yes. Um, and I think that's the constant because in our life, people will come and they'll go. Yes. I must say, discipleship was extremely helpful to me when, um, when I was growing in the early days, when I was 16 and on. I know I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for good people that walked alongside me. Yeah. People that told me the things that I wasn't told when I was seven. But let me tell you something. That, that gap of mine, that 10-year gap, really served me because what it made me realize is we make assumptions about what people know. Yes. And just because someone looks like they know something doesn't mean they do. And so there is no bad question, no stupid question. But um, if we can be present for the small pieces of information that will help people on their journey, I think that's a really good thing. I'm very grateful for the people that were present for me. Yeah, and I for, know for that you said that people never gave up on you. People never gave up. Yeah. And I'm grateful for that. And I, I realized that I must have tried people's patience. If I look back, I think, oh my goodness, I'm going to mention a name, Julia Matthews. I mean, the hours that woman poured into my life, yes. hours. And yes. it didn't make sense. But when I look at the lives that I've had the, the privilege of touching, uh, because my husband and I have been, were missionaries for 30 years and God willing, we're going to go back to the field. Um, but when I look at the lives that have been changed and pe women, young women who are in the ministry today, because someone took the time that it took with me, right. I will ever be grateful to God and particularly Julia Matthews. That's wonderful, isn't it? When God sends somebody special in our lives to help us. And Alison, we're going to talk more about you and your family in part two. So thank you for this conversation. I've really enjoyed it so far, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Thank you, Alison, very much indeed. And you see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.